I'm using the Terry Ludwig Rich McKinley landscape sets and let's take the lid off and have a look at these absolutely beautiful pastels. I've got a lovely range of them. I'll have some darks here, some greens for the foreground, lots of pales and pales here for the sky and the snow and all together there's a few brights as well for some of the flowers I'm going to put in. So it should be great. Let's get painting. I've just sketched up the outline. You can see from the original, uh, when I did the planning, I decided to move the rock over here. So on my sketch up, I've moved the rock a little bit over to the side. It's in the same dimensions, and you can tell that. If you want to get it in the same dimensions, you just run a ruler down from corner to corner of your reference and it should come out the corner so it's slightly off but close enough that I'm happy. So I have my reference which I'm just going to put out of your sight but I'll try and put a little um, over here and a little inlay of the photo when I do the video. What I'm going to do now is just start with the sky. You, you're probably still wondering whether I've made the right choice with the background colour but I really do want the complementary reds to sing through in this. It will give me a sense of summer. You could choose another colour and that would be fine. But for me, I'm going to do that. And the, the area that you are probably worried about is the sky and the mountains. How am I going to get them to look realistic with all this deep red uh, showing through terracotta colour? I'm going to start by doing lots of layering. And I'm going to start, I've got my Terry Ludwig box, but I also have... So beside my Terry Ludwig box, I've got my small box of Contes there, and I'm going to use those to start layering in the sky. Get that all-important piece of um, paper towel so I can clean them off as I go because they get a little bit grubby in there. So I'm just starting by layering in some nice warm colours near the horizon. I'll have some bluer colours up here strumbling them on over that red. Just a few different yellows down the bottom. Another blue slightly different blue and I'm bringing that down over the yellows now it's a different blue again a sort of violet blue and that's going to go over the bottom as well That is that part done. For the rest of it, I'm just going to go in with soft pastels over the top here. And I'll choose my light colours. I've got a very pale pinky colour that's going to be down at the bottom of the sky. I've got a yellowy really light yellow and I'm running some of that in too. Just running it right down. You can see I'm covering quite a lot of that red but some of it's still showing through. I've got a very pale purpley violet colour and that's going into the sky as well. I'm just running over the really light almost white colours. You can see I'm starting to fill up the tooth there. And then I've got a very pale blue and that's coming up here. You can see that I kept running them over the layer below as well to blend them in. And then a brighter blue at the top here. Now to help blend those together, I can go back to my hard 
Conte's again. So I could do it with my finger. So here I could really rub it in to get rid of some of that red behind it because I don't want too much red in the sky. So I can do a lovely finger blend here just at the side of my finger. You can see that on that side. Or I can take a pastel stick, the harder one, and use the hardness of it to really push the, the soft pastels into each other. But for this one, I'm actually going to use my finger and push them in. When you do that, you kind of use, lose the sparkle, but that's okay because I'm going to go back over the top with a little bit more sparkle. So you can see I've lost most of the, the red underneath it, but I've also lost the sparkle easily fixed. I'm just going to go back in with the blue at the top, just a little soft run over there. And then the paler blue down here. And the sort of yellowy colour down here. I even quite like to put in a very pale green. A little bit of green in there as well. So now I have the now I have the sky in, and I can just modify anything I want with a quick flick of my finger. And I've, I've re restated the, um, the bit of sparkle in there as well. I'm working down the paper here, and I'm going to now start in with the mountain. And that's going to require some, some bluey greys, purpley greys. Got a couple of those there. And... I want some light, almost whites, but because the snow is in the distance, it's almost a yellowy white. It gets a little tinge of yellow in the distance. So I'm putting out my very palest yellow there. And I think we'll just start with these and see how it goes. So the very tip, the very edge of the mountain here, is quite dark. So I'm just putting in that, that dark there to establish that. And then over this side, is quite dark as well so I'm just putting that in and then there's another little dark thing there over here I've got another little dark piece and I'm just using the sharp edges of my pastel so I'm using this blue and this sort of grey colour to put those in I don't want it just to be all the one colour so I'm using a couple of different colours as it comes a little bit forward here, there's, there's more areas that we can see. They're a little bit warmer, so I'm going to put in a warmer brown, some sort of warmer browner colours into to that mix, and a little bit down the side of the mountain there. And just mix up a few different colours in amongst that. And they're just the rocks that we can see in amongst the mountains there. I can also do a bit of work with my hard pastels just for some edges and some darks. For example, on that edge of the mountain, I'm using a little bit of charcoal because it's quite quite dark right on that edge. And the charcoal's nice and sharp, so I'm just getting in that sharp edge there. Again, over here, it sort of has a sharp edge coming down there and then back down there. And the charcoal works quite well for that. It's nice and dark value and has a nice sharp edge and that's just to reinstate the, the initial drawings that I had there I'm not particularly worried about getting exactly what I had I think that's too high up so I'm going to come down 
and just fix that with my sky colours so just pop that in a bit more and edge it up probably needs the sky to be slightly lower there as well You can keep coming back into your sky if you haven't got your edges quite right. There's some more darker areas in amongst these, so I'm just going to use a bit of my charcoal to re-establish those as well. And again, that should be lower. So sometimes you make mistakes as you're putting them in, and you can fix those. The, the snow... So the snow is coming in around about here so at this stage I want to put the snow in to oops they're very soft these Terry Ludwig so just get that out of the way I'm just putting the snow in there to kind of set the mood for it oh dear that one is really really soft do keep all your shards because I collect them all up and then use them to make other pastels and we'll have a little lesson about that sometime how to make your own pastels which are actually quite surprisingly easy so that snow is just going in along there and there'll be more snow going up here so I'm putting all that snow in At that stage I might think perhaps the sky should be a little bit darker along there so that the snow shows up better. That's something I'm going to tackle later. Right now I'm going to keep on with that mountain, um, just adding in colours, adding in some more darks down here. And I'm just adding in little dabs of colour. And moving them in the direction that I want the objects I'm painting to be. So the cliff's going this way, I move the pastel that way. This mountain is going this way, so I move the pastel that way. Just mixing up some of those darker colours on this side. It is lighter than this side, so this is going to be quite dark. And I'm going to bring in a quite deep dark blue as well up in here for some of the mountain colours and a little bit in here that you get those bluey kind of tinges in the, the cliffs as well. I'll add a little bit in here and up on that little ridge making it quite dark that little peaky ridge. Adding a bit more just along the edge some of the, the lighter paler the violet colours there too and now you notice I'm, I'm drawing it that way because there's a ridge coming along here and it's got a bit of a curve to it I don't want every single detail in here I just want the idea of it And then there's a lot more snow coming down underneath this. This is a very snowy area here, so I'm just pulling the snow down. There's a couple of tiny dabs of snow caught on some of the ridges there. So I'm just putting them in and then I'll go back in and tidy them up a bit. 
because I only want some little suggestions of a few touches of snow there. That gives me those suggestions. And running the ridges into the, the top of the snow field there. I don't really want the red showing through in the snow because it's um, it won't have that warm kind of background to it. Just popping a little bit of pale blue into the snow as well in some of the spots. You can see you've got the main idea of that mountain. few darks among the lights there. Uh, the ridge, the shadowed side, the lighter side, down here some darker bits and pieces coming through there. Just want to crisp up that little darker bit. The sky is too light behind it so I'm going to go in with the darker blue again and just bring it a little bit darker along the snow line there. It's not as dark as the, the top of the sky, but it's still darker than the snow, and that's what I want to create at this stage. I'll let some of that lighter colour show through, so I don't want to cover that up entirely. And I can just use the very sharp angular edge of the, the pastels. And the terry lug grids are nice and square, and that means you can really get close up to the edge. I think that's helped the snow to stand out a little bit. The mountain's looking quite good now and we've got the sky in so now it's time to start working down. So these are the pastels we've used so far. I have used some very light ones as the base of the sky. So I've got the, the pale pink and the pale yellow and then covering it up with the deeper blues as we go up. Then I went back in with this one. Then for the mountain, I've used the very dark blue, a dark violety brown, a light one and a bluer blue, and then some charcoal to do a little bit of edging on it. The snow was the same yellow that I used, pale yellow that I used in the sky, with a few touches of a pale blue. So next, what I'm going to be working on uh, uh, the distant hills through here. I'm going to be leaving out that tree, so I'm not worried that I put all the sky in there, but these ones will just go straight over it. Um, and I'll be working on these distant hills now. So... They're not going to be as bright as the greens I'm going to use in the foreground. So they're going to be paler greens. And I'm going to just bring that... That's, that's quite a steep hill there. And here it's going in with these not so intense greens. Which I will change and moderate a bit, but I just want to get in the base of that first. So this hill's coming up like so. And it has some rocks in there, so I'm going to be putting in some rocky shapes with some brownie sort of colours. And I'm just, you can see I'm moving my hand around and I'm not getting too excited about exactly where these rocks are. I'm not a, a real stickler for getting everything exactly as it is in your reference photo. I'm more about uh, getting the, the sense of place. Now that is a bit of a warm colour I'm putting in there, but that green is quite cool, so I can afford to put a little bit of warm in there for the rocks in amongst the green. And that's sort of going to recede against the brighter, warmer greens I'll be putting up the front here. I'm 
may even put some a, a few touches of lighter colour in amongst the rocks there. And these don't have to be very specific because it's just the idea of it. The greens of the trees are going to be much darker and so they're going to go in over the top of that. And I'm going to start putting those in now. I'm pulling out two quite dark greens and a less dark. So I've got three values of green there that you can see. A very dark one and there's quite a lot of very dark trees coming in here. And I'm just using that sharp edge to stroke up at this stage and make some pines back there. They will be coming up over the tops there. And when I put them in, then I'll go and mix in some of my other greens that I've got. Down through here, there are more of them. You can see I'm getting that piney shape by just jabbing down with that sharp side. I have my other green, so I'll be putting some of those in too. So pulling them down with a sharp edge. the forest. There are, are dark ones over this area too so popping, popping those in. There's some stands of I'm not getting too worried about being exact about where these actual trees are. Now I'm putting in a brighter green over the top too. The greens are being modified by that green I've got underneath them but I don't mind that because it's, it's like um, mixing your colours on the paper and I don't mind it picking up some of them underneath. All I want is a variety of, of different valued greens going in here. Giving the impression of pines. There are some lighter trees in there and I'm going for this sort of warmer, brighter green and I'm just going to put in the suggestion. And this is a different shaped tree so it will go in slightly differently. And there's more of it back here but I need to put in some grasses now and I'm actually going to choose that the green that I put in for the tree to run a bit more of some different lighter grasses along here behind where the, the rock is and around around the, the, the rock. Cross through here. This is going more in a, a flat plane because the grass is shorter here. I can go up in little strokes like this as well. And I'm going to mix those up. I'm not going to just do that, that sort of colour. I will add it in some more. But for the start, I'm just doing it in short jabby strokes across the page to give you the sense of short grasses there. There's going to be some rocks in here, so grasses will kind of go up to the rocks and behind here there's going to be so I've quickly established the greens there I'll be doing a few different greens there so in comes another one and just running some, some bits of that green through there as well as I come forward I'm doing the up the shorter jabby bits. So the other one was longer. This is just a shorter piece and doing shorter jabs. 
And this is trying to get a bit of variety in those grasses. And some of that will go back on the edges of that, those different trees back there. So I'm starting to establish the greens of my grasses. Uh, and I'll start to establish some of the planes of the ro major rock here and some of the minor rocks. And we'll be putting the trees, the dark trees up through there as well. The rock's going to be established in a number of planes. And so firstly, it's going to have a little rim of light around there and then down to this major plane, which is curving around the rock. So again, just take the pastel in the direction that the rock is sitting. I want that to be slightly flatter over there and then it's going to come round, curve around again. So it's just a thin rim there, and I've probably made it a wee bit too thick, but that's okay. Then this side is going to be quite dark. So I'm just looking for one of my darker ones. Again, using the sharp edge. I'm going to go in with my charcoal again in this area and it's coming under there so it's going to be darker under there. This is the, the general shape and where it comes down here it's going to be in shadow as well so that's going to be dark. And the little transition area here where we run the top light colour and the lighter and the darker shadowed colour together to give a bit of a transition there. So that's the general shape of the rock. It really does need to be a bit darker uh, at the base here. So I'm going in with something very dark and just pulling it up and around in this sort of shadowed area. All the base is going to be quite dark and then I'm going to have some dark shadows going onto the grasses. So just getting the base quite dark. This is not black. It's a very deep, deep violet purpley colour. So I'm putting some of those in. This is another quite deep colour and that's just adding some little patches amongst the rock. And again it's just dab, dab, dab. This one's got a more of a crack coming down so it's a pretty linear kind of start to that one. And then it not exactly sharp, but just little jabs, dabbing on the, the colours there and dragging it down just to get a bit of variation in. And if you just drag it lightly over the paper, then you get just light marks. So it's all about how delicate you are with your touch. A few darker little marks up there. There's some cracks in the rock. The rock is starting to sit into its landscape. It needs to be even darker around here. So I'm just going to take my rim, my really dark and, and sort of rim edge it there. And I can then go back into it. I'm going to add in some purple blues in that area as well for some variation in warms and, and darks, warms and lights, adding a few in this area as well. The rock is generally a, a fairly warm colour so going back into the side of that warm and again just dabbing it back into the rock face there. some 
some other variations we need up here in the, the light side. It still has some nooks and crannies that give it a little bit of shadowed areas too. Just reinforcing that rim there. The rock's sitting there. It looks a little bit uh, like a cardboard cutout at the moment, but we will make it sit more into its landscape. Behind it are some warm kind of uh, bushes. I'm going to use a few different lighter, warmer colours. I might just start with that to establish these bushes up, up here. These I think are too light. And this is where this box hasn't got exactly what I want, but I'm going to make do by layering. So I'm layering the red and this more earthy colour to try and get more of the colour that I actually want. And I'm going to layer some green in there as well. It'll be a darker sort of green down here at the base. And uh, a bit of a yellow as well to make it slightly brighter and not really what I'm after. Sometimes you don't have success. You're playing with it and you think you're getting it right and you're just making it worse. So I'm probably going going to my Contes and see if I can find something that's going to help me a bit more. What I need is a quite dark um, sienna kind of colour. Something probably like more like this. That's just out of my little Contes. And I'll put that in, and then I'll come back and work on that later. Just to establish some different coloured vegetation back there. And there's one coming around the end of it there too. I'll put a little bit of that over through here, and it's going to just give us a little bit of colour variation. question I'm asking myself is how I made that rock big enough. Uh, I'm not sure about that yet. I'm going to cut back in with these shadows under there. I haven't quite made the rock the right shape but I can use the shadows to modify it. And these shadows are going to go on the grasses. There, yeah, That's quite deep and dark and I'm going to go over it with some darker greens. But for the moment it's just adding some shadowed areas there around the rock to keep it sitting more in the grasses. Then I'll go back in with some darker green grasses and pop them under over that, that redder mauve kind of sh colour and that will help sit it into the grasses as well. I have the major rock, the mountains and the sky are complete, the background hill is in there. I've got a ma the major rock shape in and I'm still not sure whether I've made that big enough. So it really should be coming up into there but I did move it which is one of the problems. I may make it slightly bigger. So pretty easy to do so it's a good lesson in how to do this. I'm just re-imagining that line and then I'm pulling that one out a bit higher. And wider. So pretty easy just to make that rock substantially bigger with a few flicks of my pastel. And I think I do like it bigger. I'll just be putting on a nice edge there.
and just putting in the darks to cover up that light behind it. I'm going back and just taking some of these touches of that very dark that I used in the rock and adding them into the trees back here for some really shadowed deeper areas as well. It just all helps to tie the, the paintings together by using similar colours, the same colours in various sections of your painting. So just some of the darks in the bases of those trees. This tree, this area over here is uh, just needs a bit more of the background. I'm actually making that slightly bluer green there, some of the, those hills there. And then bringing it, that other green has come forward a little bit. So just a little touch of the bluer greens there. Mixing those greens up a little bit. I want a kind of pathway coming through there. So at this stage I'm going to add in a suggestion of a path. Just by dragging my pastel back and forth across there. Skewing, skewing it across. And I'd like the path to have a bit of a, a bit of movement in it, so I'm just giving a bit of movement there and I'll then correct the edges of it with my greens. Bring some in there to give it that little sense of moving through the landscape there. That path is going to get some different colours in it. It's going to get some warms. It's not just going to be grey. And that'll be sort of the impression of light and shade on it and, and different rocks and so on in the path. So there's the idea of the path coming through there. Uh, I think I want it to go a little bit round that way. And it kind of leads you through the painting there. Over here there's going to be another big bush and it's going to be quite dark at the base. And this is quite good too for um, holding your viewer into the painting and not letting them pop out the bottom here. So I'm, I'm putting that in. It's not going to be as big as the the original bush is quite big but because I've moved the rock over I want to make that one a little bit smaller. So this is the dark base of it and then it's going to come up into the green at tops. I just wipe it off, off as it picks up that dark underneath it. Picking up some of the dark is, is okay. And I've, I've done those down with stripes and now I'm doing some little jabby ones as well for, for some individual leaf tips that are Just a 
hard Conte with a few little jabs of it of orange onto that because the orange will help make the colour that I want. Putting some of those back in there so they don't. I want some sort of sienna colours in there too, so I'm just putting an orange over the green with a card contain which will help blend it and give some orangey kind of tips to it. And that's what I'm going to do up here as well. They need some dark bases as well. So I'm just putting in some patches of dark bases in amongst those bushes too. And I'll go back and add some greens into those. Down here, this has is actually a wild azalea and it's going to get some little azalea flowers just dabbed onto it too. And I want them to be a bit brighter than that. And this one doesn't have such a bright red, so I'm probably taking in a bit of the pink to add to it, just to give it a lighter touch. It doesn't have the red I want, but I just want it to be brighter. So I may yet dive into another box for a different red. I'm going to put in a little bit of grass growing out from underneath that too, into the path. So the past doesn't have such a straight edge there. And some rocks are going to be, some flat rocks are going to be in there. So I'm going to start them with a and these were the rocks that were the flat rocks that were in uh, the original reference, but I'm just changing them a little bit, changing their shape slightly. They're going to come into the path as well. and go in behind that tree. So the path's kind of going around those rocks. The rocks are having warm and cool colours in them. And I want some of the light colours from this rock to come down into them as well. These rocks are flat rocks, so I'm just moving, instead of coming round, as you saw me do up here, it's good just to put some linear marks as well on your rocks so it's not all smooth they're being much more horizontal but I need lights and darks in there I need warms and cools so I'm just getting a variety of different colours in those flat rocks. And they'll need the grasses growing over them to make them more rock light and they, they need some sharper darker lines in there too so I'm going back to this darker deeper pastel to put in some crack lines in amongst the rocks too to make them look more rock like and just around the edges there they're going to be a little bit darker they're kind of in shadow and around where the, the grasses are going to come back in there so now I have some rocks here the main feature rocks in the hill behind it I've got some big pies to put in and then all this foreground here which is just more of this and some more of those um, a few more rocks in here so I'll build up a little rock over here I might put some of this nice warm peachy pink in amongst that rock as well and a little bit down here just for colour variation and to get some warms into it I just lost for an instant 
the remembrance that this is the, the sunny side, sunnier side, shadowed side, sunnier side, shadowed side. that rock in maybe a couple of little rocks peeking up out of the grass here and again just suggestions on going crazy with detail. Just the idea that there are some rocks down here. I'm putting in a little bit of darkness on them though. Sorry, I think I keep bumping the camera. I'm trying a different angle for this one. So a few suggestions of rocks there. Now I need to go back in. I'm going to make um, another one of these bushes here, but maybe slightly bigger. So I need to and maybe not quite into the corner, so maybe that one's going to start up there a bit. And This is the shadowed side, remember, so it's going to be dark around here. And then it will be lighter as we come around to this side. So I'm just going to pop some lighter ones on there and add a few of the lighter ones into this one as well. So a few lighter bits. I need some more greens back in here in these bushes and I'm just going to put some down where I put the darks in them and these are really more of these zadis but they they tend to show some of the more sienna, sienna colors as they go back and the green mixed with that orangey color is kind of approximating what I was after I'll just be dotting in some of those little red rosalia flowers back here too that will echo the ones up here you can see quite a bit of the red showing through i need to get rid of it some of it back here i've just noticed that and i'm going to go in with a sort of bluey greeny color there and get rid of some of that red i don't really want it it's too distracting uh, So just putting in a bit of the more of the landscape of the rocks, uh, some of the rocks showing through there. I'll add a bit more snow as I'm going down there too. At this stage, if you find that it's getting too clogged up, you can always put a little bit of fixative on. It's still okay here. And I'm just bringing some of the snow down a little bit lower 
in some of the little areas that have obviously been in the shade and still have patches of snow on it. A little few down here. A couple of suggestions of snow up there. And I don't want the red showing up here at all, so just going back into that snow field and correcting for the red. Whoa! Didn't mean to do that, did I? That's the beauty of pastels. I was going to make it slightly bigger there so it's not quite so balanced. That's better. Blend slightly with my orange hard conte and then dot it in with the jabs of red. Some brighter, lighter ones for that side. And some darker red ones for this side, in this, more in the shadow. Down here is some bits of brighter green grass coming through. Now this field here has some very yellow, um, I think what they are, are the leaves of the mountain. It's a, almost like a big buttercup. They're quite beautiful and they have very yellow bright green and yellow leaves so I'm going to get some of those in and they will just be some jabs of yellow through the, the grasses there. I'm going to use a few different yellows this to simulate the sun shining differently on the leaves depending which way they're facing but I'm not getting too excited about um, having it exactly right it's just the For a bit of variation. If I think I've gone overboard with that, that's okay. I can knock that back a bit with the green again. And I think that's what I will do. I think I've got too much of that in now. It was only supposed to be a small amount. I've gone a little bit overboard. Uh, but I'll take my other green here and just try now to introduce a few different greens as well into that grass so it's not all the same. And that just takes some of the yellows out as well. Without me having to think too hard about which yellows I should be taking out. Now I'm getting to the bit where I want to put in these dark tree trunks and they're quite dark so I'm going to go in with them now. Um, if you've already put in the light sky and you're going over it with something dark then you just need to use something a little bit darker than you think you want your final colour to be. These are quite good marks because they, they're going to lead the eye into the painting a bit. So I can slant them differently if I want to. I do want that one to come down a bit lower and you can see how where it's got over the light it's lighter but it will be darker down here it's quite a bit thicker down here so just a couple coming up through 
through there right at the top of my painting then they're going to need the little um, calligraphic marks there and I'll, I'll be making those it's quite dark uh, down I'm going to make the grasses quite a lot darker down in there because they're a bit in shadow from these tree trunks so all that grass is going to be a little bit darker up behind there it's going to be a bit darker and then I'll just go back in with this there's some that are kind of falling over that way so there are the um, the pines and I need to put in the little calligraphic marks and I can again do that by just putting in some little charcoal and using that to make the marks of the, the, the branches just squiggling them down those trees and again just making them go in the direction, downward direction that the tree branches are growing just little for these uh, little marks you can use lead pencil over they give you very fine little lines you can see and they're very good for this kind of thing so you can mix mix lead pencil with your pastel quite successfully and you can see how fine you can get those lines then which is harder with the the charcoal or the um, pastel sticks these will get a, a little smidge of greenery on them because there's some, some green branches on these ones although most of them are kind of dead but there are some there is some greenery here so I'm going to put that in I'm just quickly making all those little marks to suggest the branches and then behind there there's quite a bit of greenery and I probably should have put that in first that's the suggestions of trees behind there it really should have gone in first but I forgot to notice it when I started putting those in. So sometimes you do forget to notice stuff and you need to put it in over the top. I'm going to have a few little lighter tints on it as well. Some brighter. I'm just going back into these ones as well while I'm at it. Put the suggestion of the trees behind it, then I just want to go back in with these trunks again, darkening them up slightly, and putting a few hints of some leaves on some of them. taking the flat side of it and working down over those branches 
I want to do a couple of lighter ones over that side so I just take my lighter one and jab a few on top there. I might want a few more little marks around the rocks there just to differentiate them a little bit from the surroundings. Just a few marks. Maybe a couple there on the rock. Just some, some with a charcoal just to make it a little bit more rock-like. I've got a nice balance I feel there. I've got moved that into a better position. The mountain is looking good. The sky has got a nice graded look to it. The dark trees over it give it some nice verticals. The path does lead you in through the painting and then the, the azaleas are balancing off. We're going one further back, further back, further back. You can see that I've knocked almost all the red out, but just little patches are showing through that give it a bit of a zing and you're not noticing it in the sky or the mountains. So there we have it. I've made it slightly more colourful than the original. I've removed that tree from that area. I've taken the rock which was very central and moved it slightly across. I think we have the textures of the rock, we have the light and the shade of the rock. We've got some uh, relief from all the green from the red that's sparkling through and the little bits of the red azalea. So thanks for joining me everyone today for the demo of the mountain, the rock and the azaleas. I hope you found it interesting using the red paper as the background and that you found the planning notes useful as well. I'll see you next time for next month's pastel lesson, lesson. but watch out for those art challenges and skill builders because there'll be plenty for you to work on uh, during the month until the next lesson. Bye for now.